Hey you guys, I'm here with Scooter today and we're going to talk to you a little bit about bracelets. So the next unit that we're going to be working on um, is going to be making bracelets or if you would like to modify it to make um, a necklace. Sometimes it's called a choker if it's like a necklace that fits very uh, closely to the neck. That would be a wonderful way for you to modify the project. So when we make bracelets, uh, there's a few different jewelry components that we have to think about. Um, mainly is we're going to need what's called a clasp. Now a clasp is the metal part of the jewelry. It's called a metal finding and that's the piece that like hooks in the back of a necklace or it hooks um, on a bracelet. And the reason we want a clasp is because uh, most of you are going to be working with thread that is not stretchy, not flexible. Um, so we need a clasp in order for it to fit on our hand because the thing about making bra bracelets and necklaces is your wrist is where the bracelet is going to be worn um, and your hand is wider than your wrist. So you can't slip it over your hand. So that's why we're going to make the bracelet almost as like a straight little line and then boop, it can clasp on. Some of you guys probably already knew that, but I like to explain because it seems like there's always a few people every year that are like, what? Why can't I just like tie a knot? Well, it's because your hand is bigger than your wrist and your head is bigger than your neck. So that's why we can't just tie it when we're making tight fitting jewelry. So that's the first thing to know about bracelets is clasps. Now I have like a whole mix match of uh, different types of clasps in my room. And since we're sending supplies home, I just I just gave all the clasps away that I had. So I'm going to put um, a little picture right here. This shows all the different kinds of clasps. You might be able to see the kind that you got here. Um, Cause there's a whole variety. There was like toggle clasps. Um, there was like barrel clasps, lobster claws. They all have the same exact function. It's just to like clip onto your wrists or hook or latch onto your wrist. Um, they just look differently. So if you're looking through your jewelry kit, look for something like this. Now the other thing that we're gonna be using in our bracelet is called a crimp bead. Twink. Here's a picture of it. Um, they're like these super tiny metal beads. They're made of a soft metal. And what we do is when we're going to tie our knot with our thin beading thread, um, we're going to actually tie the knot and then slip a crimp bead on top of it. And then with our pliers, we're going to pinch that bead gently until it flattens. So this is going to like protect that knot and keep it from coming undone. I've done it in the past with students where we don't tie a knot at all. We just use the crimp bead as a knot. But I've found that with this type of thread that we're using, um, sometimes it slips out. So we don't want it to slip out. So this year we're going to tie a knot and put a crimp bead on top of it. <laughs> He's very snuggly in the morning. Okay, so we talked clasps, we talked crimp beads. What else is left, Scooter? Um, symmetry. So we're going to be designing beaded bracelets that are two or more colors. And they're going to use pattern, and they're going to use what we call dynamic pattern. So we're going to have these areas that are evenly spread out in the bracelet, here's an example, um, of pattern and color. And the only way to get this to work out perfectly is to measure <laughs> ahead of time. Now, sometimes people get a little bit nervous, like, Oh no, I have to use math and numbers in jewelry class? Yes, of course. If you want to make a professional looking product, which we do, then you have to use some numbers. So get ready because we are going to um, measure the circumference of our wrist and then we're going to divide it up into different sections. That way we know where to put our areas of pattern, where to put our focal beads, all, all kinds of stuff like that. So you do need to make a little sketch that's um, labeled, it's accurate to scale and size, so that way you can come up with a beautiful bracelet. <laughs> Let's see, okay, so we've got our pattern, we're gonna measure, we've got our crimp beads, what else could we think of? Oh, we're gonna be using, um, we're gonna use some seed beads for this project, or if I included a bag of larger like pony plastic beads, you can use those as well. If you'd like to go to the store and purchase your own beads, that's fine with me too. Or maybe you already have a collection of beads. You just want to make sure that you have enough of whatever bead you're choosing um, to actually make it the whole 
span of the bracelet. So that's kind of where that planning and sketching comes ahead, measuring things out. Um, we want to make sure that you don't like get halfway through the bracelet and realize, oh, I, d I never even had enough of these to begin with. So we want to plan accordingly. We're going to work with the materials we have on hand. Uh, they might not be your favorite colors, and that's okay. I think it's going to force you to be creative because sometimes with limited resources, we have to make some creative decisions that we otherwise wouldn't have chosen for ourselves. Uh, and it's always a good idea if they're not your favorite colors, um, consider making it for someone who would enjoy those colors. Maybe you have a friend who really likes red and black and you could definitely make it for them. So I think that's all I can think about. Um, in terms of bracelets right now, should we talk about maybe some craftsmanship, a little bit of like grading? I think that would be good. Um, so on these bracelets, it's gonna have the same rubric that you've seen for the two previous projects. Um, it's pretty much relating to skills and techniques. So in terms of bracelets, there's not a ton of technique happening here because they're pretty straightforward. So the two things that I'm gonna be looking for is I'm going to be looking for how well attached the clasp and crimp bead are. So this example right here, um, it shows, it shows it's a really good example because you can see that the crimp bead is flush, meaning it's really close to the clasp. There's not like extra string or cord hanging out. <laughs> oh no, you're gonna have to sit down. Um, so that's kind of what we want. I'll show you, um, I don't want to say a bad example, but I'll show you an example where the crimp bead is not close to the clasp. So if we look at this picture here, um, we can see that there's a lot of exposed thread. Now, I don't want to say it's bad because I know that this person probably tried their hardest, but the problem is when you leave a lot of thread exposed like that, it is, uh, it's in danger of becoming weak. It can snag on things, it can catch on things, it can pull and then eventually come undone. So you don't want to be leaving your thread out. This thread is not decorative, it's not meant to be seen. That's why we're putting beads on it, okay? So it's not like a design element, so I don't want to see your thread sticking out. <laughs> okay, think of this as like, and that's kind of the underwear of the bracelet, you know, like we're gonna cover that up with clothes, aka beads. So don't have that hanging out, tuck it into beads, please, because it's not for decoration and it's not functional, it's not strong. If you leave it like that, it's gonna break. Um, The other thing that we should consider is, let's see, we got our beads. What else do we have? The craftsmanship, mm -hmm. pattern. Yes, you're right, Scooter. Okay, so with our pattern, uh, we wanna make sure that it's symmetrical and that it's centered. That's the other craftsmanship um, element that I'm gonna be looking for. Your focal point beads and your patterns, they need to be centered on the bracelet evenly. Uh, I want them to be evenly distributed, okay? Which means you'll have to hold them up to your sketch as you go or measure them with a ruler as you go. So those are the two main craftsmanship pieces. You can see on this example, um, they are totally well spaced. It is very balanced feeling. Uh, compared to this example, you can see that the design pattern is, is pretty off center. So it leads to, um, I mean, it leads to feeling unbalanced and you kind of look at it and you think, oh, what in the world? Like, how come that's pushed over slightly to the edge? Very easy fix with bracelets. You just slip the beads off as you go if you need to correct where the pattern is sitting. I know that that's a little tedious, uh, but it's not difficult. Okay, so you just have to have a little bit of patience with this project um, and learn as you go, you know? Always be pushing yourself to do your best work. Find a nice calm place where you can work um, in a focused way where you're not gonna make mistakes because we want your work to be thoughtful and intentional and professional. Now, if you would like to give yourself an extra challenge and you still have some of that heavier gauge wire, you could have the option of making your own clasp, kind of like these. Um, I have a video tutorial that you can watch on how to make these. Uh, it's not difficult. Everyone last semester did it because I didn't give them pre-made clasps. I do think that these clasps are a little bit, sometimes they're easier um, to put on if you're making a bracelet. Sometimes with like bracelets, it's hard uh, to put a clasp on because obviously this hand is like up here and then you only have one hand to clasp it. So if you wanna make your own wire toggle clasp or S hook clasp, um, they are a little bit easier to use. You don't have to make one, but if you are really enjoying working with metals, check out uh, these tutorials, I guess on my YouTube channel and then you'll figure out how to make them. I 
think that's all I know, folks. Uh, look forward to a couple of assignments coming up on Teams that'll help get you started in planning the bracelet, making the clasps if you like, and then beginning beading. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later.